Hi everybody, Bill Sky, the assembly guy. Just had an apple, I'm all jazzed up. Want to get this done for ARM. We're gonna be talking about simple arithmetic on ARM, central processing units in assembly language. So let's just jump into this baby and get it done. So I've got my Linux up here and let's go ahead and start a ARM assembly language project. And I don't know, um, let's do a let's do a 32-bit one this time. So I'm gonna go over here to the ARM 32-bit template. I'm gonna right click on it, extract it here. And I'm gonna just rename this ARM 32-bit simple arithmetic. Hope I spelled that right. And let's go in there and, and do some addition and subtraction. So, very, very easy. First of all, all arithmetic in a CPU must go through the CPU somehow. In other words, you must have a value in the CPU for it to be able to do the addition. You can't add memory locations. You have to move at least one of the memory locations into the CPU. Most of the time you have to have, move them all into the CPU, but we're gonna see some of that right now. So let's go ahead and add some Let's just go ahead and add some literals, uh, some immediate values. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move into the R0 register, the number 100. I'm gonna move into the R1 register, the number 200. And then I'm gonna add, as the destination R1, I'm gonna add R1 and R2. So that's what that means. Let's build it. Built perfectly because we do perfect coding here. And let's debug it. Now I want to do the debugging a little bit different this time. Now this is on Mint Linux and the terminal I have, I can say file new tab, open tab, and then I can say make debug two. So on the first tab I said make debug one. On the second tab I said make debug two. And as usual, this assumes that you've downloaded my templates for ARM assembly language projects. All right, so let's see how this works. I'm gonna go ahead and step. Okay, we're gonna put, oh, actually, let's go ahead and do the welcome, hello world. And it already put the 100 into R0, so we can see R0 has a decimal value of 100, a hexadecimal value of 64. We're gonna put a decimal 200 into R1, which is hexadecimal C8. We're gonna add R1 plus R2 and put that into R1, so that should be 300. Oh, I did the addition wrong, duh. I copy, I did R2 plus R1, R2 had 14, R1 had 200. It worked, R1 now has 214, but that isn't actually what I wanted to do. So one of the beautiful things about debugging is that you, you come up with these, you can see them so much easier. So I did this wrong. So the destination should be R0. We want to add R0 and R2. I love problems like that. Okay, so let's go back to our first tab. We'll debug one, go back to our second tab, debug two. As I did in the previous project, I'm gonna break point, create a break point at position 10088. We're gonna continue. There's my move 100 into R0. There it is, move 200 into R1, add R2 and R0. Actually, that should have been R1. So now it's gonna be 114 in R0. Oh man, I'm having issues today. So I think you get the idea, but it, you know, doing this over and over again like this is actually really good practice. And also, I, I kind of like the way that I'm making these mistakes because we all make the mistakes. So there's 100 in R0, there's 200 in R1, add R1 and R0, put it in R0, and we got 300. Yay! So we finally got that done. So that is how you do immediate values. You've got to put the values into the register first, and then you can go ahead and add them together. Now, another way you could have done it is I could have said, gotten rid of this move, and I could have just done this. So I could have moved 100 into R0. I then could have said add R0 
or R0 is equal to R0 plus the 200 literal. Let's go ahead and make that. Make sure it builds okay. It does great. Debug it. Okay, so we move 100 into R0. We add 200 to R0 and put it in R0, and we get 300. So that's just another way of doing it with literals. Now we already did the register to register, so we're done with that. So the data has to go into the registers first and then you add them up. So that's simple arithmetic. Um, that's simple addition, I should say. Now what the other thing we can do is we can subtract R0 comma R0 comma 300. So I can subtract things like that. And subtract isn't, isn't really any different than addition. You have the destination, and then you have the two numbers that you're going to be subtracting or that you're going to be adding together. So subtraction and addition, very, very simple. Let's make sure this all works. Because we never know today what's going on. It's that apple that messed me up. Okay, so R0 has 300. I'm going to say subtract. 300 from R0 and put it back into R0 and there it goes. It's back into R0. Hey, somebody asked me on YouTube, they sent a question. They sent me a question, where does this actual number, where is the literal number 200 or the literal number, the immediate value 300, where is it actually stored in memory? And actually, I thought that was a really good question. Um, I don't remember any student ever having that question before. Well, let me show you. When, when, when you build using my make files in my, in my templates, there is a main.lst file that's generated. So I'm going to go ahead and, and vim that. And vim is simply an editor. And let's talk about this a little bit. We've got the machine code over here on the left, and we've got the code that we wrote that generated that machine code. So this one line of code right here generated these four lines of machine code and it's just basically data okay if we come on down moving the literal one into zero that's what this a0 e3 is a03 e3 means move something into r0 and here's the zero one that we're moving into r0 so the literal isn't actually taking up data memory it's actually in the code itself. It's taking up memory in the code. It's part of the instruction. Uh, here's another example. When we moved 100, the literal 100 into R0, notice the move 1 into R0, the machine code generator was A0, A3, but it doesn't matter what the value is. Whenever you move anything into R0, it's A0, E3. And 100 in hexadecimal is 64. So when you move an immediate value or a literal value into a variable, I shouldn't say a variable, into a register, it's actually part of the instruction. This is the assembler language. That is the machine, not the assembler language, that's the machine code. And then that is actually converted into ones and zeros. And actually it's not converted. The listing file itself converts, converts the binary numbers into hexadecimals so we can more easily look at them. And that's one of the benefits of a, of a listing, is that you can say, well, where are all my R zeros? All my R zeros are A0, E3. Every move R0 is an A0, E3, and the value we're moving into it is 64. Here's an A0, E3 that we're moving the number 200, C8, and the one zero is part of the instruction. And the one zero stands for one in the R1. So that's what the listing file is for. So you can actually see the machine code that's being generated. So, so, so back to the addition and subtraction. So subtraction of a literal, you can also say subtract the destination R0. I want to subtract r0 from or actually i want to subtract r1 from r0 and that's what you'll get it'll subtract r1 from r0 in this case i'm not sure what's in r r1 let's go ahead and build it i 
And let's see what that second subtract is going to do. So we're going to subtract R1 from R0. So we're going to subtract 200 from 0. And we're going to put it into R0. And notice we have a whole bunch of Fs because that subtraction created a 2's complement negative sign number. Uh, you do the same thing if you're going to be doing literals. Or not literals, if you're going to be doing variables. If I have two variables, and oh, I have to change this, this template again because it just isn't lined up to my, to my satisfaction. If I create a D word var 1 dot D word 100, let's make that D word var 2 dot D word 0x 200. I can also add and subtract variables. But to do that, I have to move them into the registers. So I'm going to load register R3. And actually, let's see you do the ADR. I'm going to do the ADR into X3, oh, into R3, because I keep thinking we're 64 bit. R3, the address of D word var. Then I'm going to move into R0. Nope, not move. LDR into R0. D referenced R3. So that's going to put D word var into R0. Then we're going to say, get me the address and put in at R3 of D word var2, load into R1, R3, and then subtract, or we could add, add, resulting in R0, R0, R1. So let's see how that makes up. Oh, got a problem here. Now, the problem here is not with the fact that we have a data section. It's with the fact that this ADR in 32-bit mode, 32 bit mode can't reach that section. It's too far away byte-wise, distance-wise in bytes. So this is something that really I haven't seen this happen on 64-bit, but it's obviously happening here on 32-bit. So to eliminate that problem, we're just going to use the LDR equals syntax. Let's go ahead and make that. Works like a charm. Let's debug it. OK, let's get down there. OK, so we're going to put the address of D word var 1 in R3. We're going to then move R3 into R0. Let's watch R0 at the top of the window. It's got 100, hexadecimal 100. Now we're going to put the address of D word var 2 into R3. We're then going to put that address. We're going to dereference R3, go out to memory, grab that data, put it into R1. There it is, 200 is in R1. We're going to add those two together, put it into R0. There's your 300, and then we, we finish up. So pretty easy, could do with a bunch of uh, comments here. I'm going to leave that to you to do it but pretty important that you add those comments. Now, incrementing in x86, and I'm going to put some comments here. In x86, 64-bit assembly, we also have a couple other statements. We have the increment. That would increment EAX, or we have the decrement EAX. You don't have that in ARM assembly. You just add one to it. Incrementing means go up by one, decrementing means go down by one. It's just basically adding one. So it's just different in, in ARM assembly. Now, what happens if you add a number to a register and you're now over the register? You're now over the, you know, let's say, so a normal 32-bit register, an R register has 32 bits. So let's go ahead and, and, and load register, let's move into R0, 0x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now, what that's going to do is that's going to completely fill up the register's bits. They're gonna, it's going to be filled with ones. And then what happens if I say add R0 from R0, the number 1? What's going to happen? Well, let's take a look. 
Okay, first of all, we have a little bit of a problem here. Um, I'm trying to move R0. Oh, forgot the, forgot the hashtag there because it's a literal. All right, great. Now let's see what happens. So we're basically adding one to something that's already filled up. So let's just get down to that. So let's go ahead and step. We're gonna wipe watch an R0. Notice R0 has all Fs in it. It's interesting the debugger shows R0 has a value. We're moving zero into R0. That's what threw me off. It's a little bit confusing. So we have all Fs in there. So I'm gonna step, I'm gonna add one. It goes from all Fs to zero. Now, how do we know that? How do we know that we lost a bit? It, the addition added one to all ones and we lost a bit. The most significant bit is gone, okay? Because we don't have 33 bits, we only have 32. So one of the ways to, to check that out to see if a bit has been lost is you can do a branch if carry. So when you lose a bit, when you have more bits than your register can handle, the carry flag gets that bit. And one of the ways of doing that is to jump to a, a location. So I'm going to do this. I'm gonna go ahead and do a branch if the carry is set. That's what BCS means. Branch if the carry is set. And I'm gonna say error or print error. Now we have to create that. And the way that you create a label is put the label name with a colon, no spaces. And these label names must be unique in the entire program. I'm also going to create a end all label. And if it doesn't branch, I'm going to branch end all. So let's talk a little, this is our first kind of if statement in assembler. So we move all Fs to R0, we add one to R0. If the carry flag has been turned on because we ran out of bits to contain the, the full sum, if the carry flag is set, we want to branch if that carry flag is set to print error. Print error is right there and we're going to do something. I don't know, I'm going to move into R0, I don't know, something like that. Do something, you can print an error or something like that. Um, but if an error didn't occur, we're just going to skip over this and we're going to branch to end all. So it's just going to skip all this code and branch directly to end all. So let's build and make sure I didn't make an error, which I didn't. So what's actually happening here is that the add command does do, the add statement does do the addition of the one to the all Fs, but it doesn't set any flags. You don't have that in x86-64, but I guess there was a use for not having the flag set. Maybe you want to do an addition. You don't want to affect somebody else's function that might be running, that might be using the flags. So if you want to be able to check the flags later, you say add s. And add s will set the flags if there's a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and save that and let's debug it. And we're going to get down to that all Fs. It shows as a zero, which I think is kind of interesting. Okay, so it puts all Fs in that register R0. Now we're going to add one to it. And our branch carry set should jump to print error, which it does because we use the add S instead of the add. So and you have the same issue with subtract, sub s instead of sub. So whenever you're doing any kind of mathematics, arithmetic, you always want to check that carry flag to see if a one has been borrowed from the ether, use it from subtract, or if one, you've lost a bit because it's overflowed. So that's simple addition and subtraction in ARM assembler language. Hope to see you at the next video.